I've been to Agne. Happy Friday, happy Friday. Jen, uh, Jen Dempsey, how are you? Pookie1663, Amy Nevigio, I don't know if I, Laura Pack. Hi, Mrs. Melissa Pratt. Hi, Julie Morgan. Hi, Bella. Hi, Jean. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy that we're all here together on a Friday. I'm so happy we made it to Friday. Uh, I'm looking forward to the weekend, and I'm really glad to be speaking with somebody today that I admire and somebody today uh, that I hope will help us get through the weekend and through these last couple of weeks of this year and help us prepare for the new year uh, by talking about what's really essential in our lives. And that's why I really wanted to have Greg McEwen join us today. He wrote the best-selling book, Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less. The Disciplined Pursuit of Less. And I've been a big fan of his, an admirer of his. And uh, this conversation, we're going to put it up in the Sunday paper uh, because I think so much of what he says, and you can follow him on Instagram. Obviously, you can read his book. He has a podcast. And he talks about the importance of boundaries, about discernment, about asking yourself certain questions that help you decide what actually is essential in your life what's keeping you from actually focusing on your priorities. And, um, you know, maybe there's many of us who do too many things and don't actually focus on the one or two things that we should be focusing on. And that actually ends up leaving us feeling depleted, angry at ourselves, or feeling like we're not really doing anything and we're just actually doing too much. So um, Debbie says, hi, I'm so anxious to hear him. Well. Be calm about hearing him. Sit back, uh, focus, relax. Um, he, he, these are some questions, uh, he'll, and I'm going to bring him on in a minute, but I liked this. He said, have you ever found yourself stretched too thin? Hmm. Do you sometimes feel overwhelmed and underutilized? Yep. Do you feel motion sickness instead of momentum? That's an interesting question. Does your day sometimes get hijacked by someone else's agenda? Very often for me. Have you ever said yes simply to please and then resented it? Yes, that would be me too. Um, he, and then he says, if you answered yes to any of these, the way out is the way of the essentialist. Woo, there's a way out. <laughs> Today we're gonna find a way out. Wow, we, I'm really excited. Um, let's see if I can find him. Uh, let's see, where is he? There he is, there he is. I'm gonna see, and then hopefully he'll be joining us with his wisdom and uh, all of his, but there he is. Hi, Greg. Hey, how are you, Maria? I'm good, how are you? Oh, I'm well, but your, your intro there was amazing. You just need to keep on going because that, oh. you, you could, I couldn't do better myself, marvelous. I need you to join me and then I'll wrap you up really well too. How about that? <laughs> Brilliant. Good. Well, I'm so glad, you know, we haven't really met, but you know that I'm an admirer of yours and I've quoted you and written about uh, some of the things that you've written about, but I thought it would be such a great way to kind of end out this year to talk to you because you kind of coined this phrase essentialism and we've heard it used so much this year mm. in terms of who's essential, who's not, what's essential, what's not. How do you think the word has evolved this year into our vernacular? Well, it's, um, I mean, everybody when COVID first hit uh, suddenly had to live as involuntary essentialists. Uh, you know, it was, like, it was like we'd all been sent to our room. You know, somebody up there said, look, you know, you go and, you go and sit down and you have a good think about it and uh -huh. you come out when you're ready. And, and so that's the opportunity, the great reset that we, that we had to be able to really work out of all these things we were doing previously, right. which ones really matter to us, which ones do we want to go back to? Uh, there was a YouGov poll in the UK that showed that only 9% of people wanted to go back to how things were before. Only 9%. Only 9%. So, so it's this sense that, yes, we don't want to be living in this as our new normal forever, but that doesn't mean we want to rush back to how it was before this frenetic, frantic, 
undisciplined pursuit of more either. So this is a chance, I think 2020, a pause in a way, amidst all the exhaustion, all the uncertainty to, to wonder what is it we want 2021 to be? What are the essentials we want to design our life around? You said that COVID made all of us around the world involuntary essentialists. What is a voluntary essentialist? And for those who have not read your book or have not listened to your podcast, and I was saying it to, before you came on, you can listen to your podcast, you can follow you on Instagram where you pose really thought-provoking questions, but what does it mean to identify as an essentialist? A an essentialist is someone who is really exploring what is essential, eliminating everything that is not essential, and then building a system to make it as easy as possible to do what really matters. It's those three things, explore, eliminate, and execute. That's what essentialism is. And an essentialist is someone who doesn't just do that once or twice, but really embodies those three things. Okay, explore, eliminate. Yeah. I mean, it helps someone do that. You've written about the, your ability to be discerning and to have the practice of discernment. And you hear a lot about that in the Catholic faith and definitely having gone to a Jesuit school, but how do you decide um, what is essential? How, how do you eliminate what isn't? Okay, so we could do this in, in two different ways. I could talk about how you could do it, or you and I could really apply it right now. Which one would you prefer? Let's apply it. Okay, so, so here's, I'll ask you a question, just your first answer to the question, Maria. What is one thing that's essential for you right now, highly important, but you're currently underinvesting in it. You know it matters, but really, if you're honest, you're not doing as much or about it as you wish you were. First thought. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You've already life. had it. You've oh, already had the thought. I know you already had it. What was it? My love life. I'm not Your love this. life. <laughs> My goodness. That that's, that was not the answer that I was expecting, but it's, I, but it's marvelous. I work, I work all the time. I'm right. I'm deeply invested in my children. I'm deeply right. invested in my friends and in my work and my purpose and my service. And well, actually, maybe I'm also not um, invested in kind of rest or in, you know, less. I'm, yes, I'm, yes, but your first answer was awfully good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to that. Yes, if, if, if you'd prefer, I will take a different answer. Although, <laughs> although I feel like it's, it's easy to look at your life from a, from a distance, it's easy to imagine what you just described. Your existing commitments to family, your existing commitments to noble and good causes, and many of them, you know, all of that, I can see you are highly... So, uh, so, so let's take the let's take this area about a little more time for yourself. Then let's yes, let's, so let's call let's, it self love. Let's call it investigating. You know, being my children are grown. A lot of people find themselves okay. Wait a second, my children have grown. Now what can I do with my life? Yeah, and and so for for you personally, do you actually find that you are spending time on that? Is that or, or are you saying look, really, there's so much on my plate. I don't actually spend much time, what, journaling, exploring, thinking? No, I or you... do. I'm, I'm beginning. I'm beginning to do that. I'm beginning. Mm -hmm. I recognize that I've, you know, accomplished many of my professional goals. I've, uh, you know, I do well with my kids and my family. So I feel like, okay, what, what isn't essential? I've been asking myself, and I do ask myself that a lot. I know you talk a lot about boundaries. I did not grow up with boundaries. I think... Uh, um, a lot of people didn't grow up with boundaries. It wasn't part of our conversation. So I'm learning to impose boundaries. Mm -hmm. Not easy. Yeah, it, 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 it isn't easy. Let's just come back to this, this question of what, I'll give you one more shot at the question, like what's something essential that you're under investing in right now? So I'm sort of steering clear of the answer you first gave. I guess what <laughs> makes me happy outside of work. Maybe okay, one. good. Let's go with okay, that. So, so, <laughs> so, so why, why is that important to you? Like you just gave, you said it's essential. That matters. Why does it matter? Well, I think it matters because, you know, I've been in jobs as many people have, and I think many people lost their jobs this year. I've been in a job that I got fired from, uh, that I've lost jobs. So I don't want to have my only identification be my job. Mm -hmm. So my job is a big part of my 
world. And for most people also, it's a huge part of their income, it's their survival. But who are we outside of our jobs? I often like to look at that. Yeah, you, what, what you just said was that, was that a job is almost always hugely important to somebody, but you don't want it to be your identity. Yes because it can be lost. In fact, it will be lost. Eventually, one, for one reason or another, you will not do the job you are currently doing. You'll Correct. move on to something. Correct. So, so from a sense of identity, and let me ask you this, what would, like, what would success look like for you in this? If you felt like, yes, I'm now spending enough time exploring what would bring me joy, is it more time to talk about that, to think about that? Is, it, is that the adjustment you'd want to make? A uh, good question. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, I don't know. Actually, mm -hmm. you're you're <laughs> saying like therapy. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that, that that's uh, on the podcast. People do say that, even though I'm not really going for that exactly. But but um, well, that but that's interesting because what you just told me is that you think it's really important. Mm -hmm. It is essential to you, but if if you don't mind, it sounds like it's such a new thing to really spend time on that question you're not even sure what the process would be right exactly be because because so much of your life has been lived productively in the public square in one right. way or another yes I that think really people I think most people right are spending their time um, you know in their job uh, so many women spend their time in service I think either to their children, maybe to their parents, uh, to schools in service and volunteerism, that maybe when your parents pass away or your children get bigger or your job changes, you're looking at like, wait, wh where am I? Who am I? What is essential to me now? Who are the people that yeah. can take this path forward? How do I want to age forward? What is really, it, I think COVID has taught so many of us that our worlds are small in many ways mm. and who's checking in on us, who we really need and what, mm -hmm. we, need, what we really need. Yeah, I really agree with that. I, I once worked with, with a woman whose goal was to become a certain title, you know, position in the organization. And when she didn't make that position, she just said, look, Greg, you don't understand. I am my job. And whether that's for a professional, our family roles can be the same. Uh, the, the, the Madonna complex where somebody goes, look, I know how to be a mother of young children, yeah. but I don't know how to be when I don't have that role. It was so meaningful and so important. So whether it's a professional job or even some of the, some of the other titles we have in life, it's to try and create space outside of those for what's essential to me? What, yeah, what am exactly. I really here to do? And not just letting our previous commitments answer that for us. So you're, so you're talking about constantly asking oneself these kind of deep probing questions. You had something on your Instagram where you said, what is one thing you can do that will make everything else easier or unnecessary? And you said that everybody should be asking that question to themselves in all of these areas of our life, in the financial area, the personal, the professional, what's yeah. one thing? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a powerful question for, for, for sure. And, and I still wanna just apply it just to you for just a second, which is, you know, what is one thing that really you could do to, cre to try and create this space to answer this question for you? In fact, I just want to ask it right now. What is something that sparks joy for you outside of family, outside of community service, just something that you personally enjoy doing? I enjoy meditating. Yeah. I enjoy walking in nature. Yeah. Something creative, something, something outside of just mental health. I mean, something it's for its own sake. I like to I like to do this. It's not for, not for an audience. It's not for it's even directly service. What comes to mind for you? Um, well, I like to help people. Does that, that count? Does, I like to be in conversation with people and to help them see what I see in them that they may mm. not see in them. Does yeah. that count? I don't know. Does that well, count? They're, they're, all, they're all good answers because what they, they, they said, say to me is, is two things. One is that it really says that you are focused on service 
to others. Like I, I know that already, but, but that's where your, your, uh, you know, that's where you are spontaneously going to when I'm asking you these questions on the spot. Right. It, it also reveals a little bit to me again, that there's a space here that could be cultivated, that could be powerful for you, right? The, 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 the actual space to explore, no, what is it for its own sake, not for anybody else? And that, that's not, I'm not implying like being selfish, but I am suggesting that, that we need to find things in our lives that spark joy in themselves for us. So uh, several, I had a, several people here are trying to help me out with your comments. <laughs> people say, you like to bake, that's true. A couple other people said, wow, it's so sad that you can't come up with something quicker. <laughs> but I don't I, think, to me exactly, it's not sad though. It's sad. What? It's, I don't think it's sad because what yeah. I think it says is that you have spent your life that you yeah. were you were taught to, That's and it was in the sort of culture of your you know family. I'm I'm sort of reading into it, and then into your whole life. I'm I am about service. Yeah. And this is this is it is not about me, and I think that is powerful and beautiful. And oh, somebody <laughs> just reminded me. I do. I love to write poetry. I I write poetry. I write a lot. All right, of let's poetry. talk about that. So uh, so do. You, yeah, so I do do that. Somebody else poetry. Do, poetry. Do you do you wish you were spending more time writing poetry? When yeah. you hear that, no. No, I write <laughs> a lot of poetry. So I write yes. almost daily. So I do that already. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but let's get off of me. <laughs> we'll we'll do that right now. We, the the idea is simply to to look through our lives and to have a, a small honest uh, meeting with ourselves. Uh, where we say, look, what really is essential that we're under-investing in? And, and what are the first answers that come to mind and trusting those answers? And then to say the second question, what is non-essential that we're over-investing in? And to, again, to trust the answers, because almost everyone I've ever worked with have things that are non-essential for them, that they, if, if they're, as soon as they hear that question, they go, yeah, I'm spending too much time in social media. I'm spending too much time uh, you know, binge watching this thing or whatever. I'm spending too much time uh, working at these kinds of meetings. They're not really productive. There are answers that they basically already know the answer to, but they're just so busy doing it that they don't see clearly. Uh, you, you know, they're not, they're not, they don't have the clarity to actually trade off and say no to the non-essential so that they can the say benefit, yes to the essential. What in your mind, Greg, is the benefit of saying, of probing that question and say, wow, I'm spending too much time on social media. I'm spending too much time in my work. I'm spending too much time before. I knew one thing before COVID, I was spending too much time traveling. But, yes. Um, so what are, what is the benefit of eliminating those things from your life, even if you enjoy them? Every time we say yes to a thing, we're saying no to many other things. And when people say no to a non-essential, what they don't fully recognize in the moment is that they are often saying yes to something that's essential. That they're not just saying, well, this thing isn't so bad. It's that every time they say yes to something that's, that's relatively trivial, something vitally important isn't going to happen. They're not going to invest in that. Um, I, I, was, um, I was talking to, to, to a woman on the, the podcast who, uh, she read Essentialism and she started asking this question every day. What's one, what's the most important thing I need to do today? Mm -hmm. At first, the answers she got to that question were all work related. She runs a consultancy in the UK. Then slowly it moved into sort of self-care, self-love activities and she could see that change. But then one day she gets a call from her dad that says, look, you know, not no need to worry you, your mother's in the hospital again, but it's nothing serious. You've got way too much on your plate, no need to come. Uh, you know, just wanted to let you know. When she asked the question that day, it was so clear to her. Mm. She said, I remember where I was, what, what the weather was like, the time sort of stood still. She just knew the most important thing I need to do today is to drop everything, drive two hours to the hospital to be there with my mother. She does that, she goes into the hospital room, she says to her mother, look, I love you, I care about you. Her mother says the same back to her, everything's gonna be fine. But within an hour of that, her mother had fallen into a coma, and within a week of that, they had shut off her life support machine, and that was it. This was the last conversation. And she was sharing this because she was saying, look, if I hadn't been an essentialist, if I hadn't been trying to be an essentialist, I would have made a different trade-off there. And so that's really what essentialism tries to shine a light on is, is to become really conscious and deliberate about 
the trade-offs we are making. Every day we're making them, but we aren't always aware that we're making them. So we unintentionally find ourselves following a strategy we didn't really mean to pursue. Right. I, I love the idea, which I think is so kind of has been counterintuitive of you telling people that less is actually more. And yeah. people, particularly in the United States, we're all about, you know, I'm a burnout, I'm doing 10 things. We feel it's a badge of honor to be incredibly busy. And your whole philosophy about less and rest and saying no is so counterintuitive for people. Yeah, this principle of less but better challenges me for sure. I mean, I learned about it kind of the hard way. I remember uh, I uh, got an email from my boss at the time said, look, Friday between one and two would be a very bad time for your wife to have a baby uh, because <laughs> I need you to be at this client meeting. Uh, and, and Friday we are in the hospital and our daughter's just been born. And so Friday morning, instead of being focused on this most important moment, this most important relationships, uh, I, to my shame, go to the client meeting. And I remember afterwards, even my manager said, yeah, yeah, exactly. A, a, a real a fail on my part. And I, I remember even afterwards, my manager said, look, the client will respect you for the choice you just made to, to be here even on this day. And the look on their faces didn't evince that sort of respect and confidence. But even if they had, it's clear to you, of course, to everybody, to me, that I made a fool's bargain, that I violated something much more important for something much less important because I was trying to do both. And, and what I learned from that was an important lesson, which is if you don't prioritize your life, mm -hmm. someone else will. Yeah. And, and, and that's really what I think being an essentialist is about, is, is saying I'm going to take responsibility for the prioritization of my life instead of just doing everything everyone's doing Instead of just trying to do both every time you're faced with a trade-off, or how can I do both like I did in the hospital? I'm trying to do both. You say, what's the most essential one? I'm choosing it, and I'll let the other thing pass. This, this for me is hard work, actually. I still find, I still struggle with this. But I think the way of the essentialist is that way of more selectivity. I love that. And I love this other thing you said, Greg, which is that, I read on your uh, Instagram that there is great strength in our weaknesses and that beneath something that we identify as one of our weaknesses that may give us shame, that there is an, uh, actually an opportunity to be of service. There's an opportunity to share that weakness. Can you explain that a little bit? Because I think so many of us are focused on what we don't have, where we're weak, where we're not successful enough, and your thought about that. Well, one of the thoughts I have about that is this idea that has come really into focus for me in COVID times. And it's this, that, that if you focus on what you lack, right. then you lose what you have. But if you focus on what you have, you gain what you lack. Okay. And, and so, so I, just, I just love the idea that if we, if we focus on the things that are going right, even amidst things you can't control, like a pandemic, but there's loads of other examples. I mean, my, my best friend growing up uh, just, uh, just got, uh, you know, pretty likely to be diagnosed a second time with cancer and, and, and it's supposed to be untreatable now. And it's absolutely awful. I mean, that's like the saddest day of my life as it happens. Uh, and of course, his. Um, but in the midst of all of that, you, there's so many things that happen you don't have control over. And if you focus on, on those things you can't control and things that, 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 that pull you off, you know, to pull you off what is going right, then they'll consume you, body and soul, and there's nothing left of you. And then you're in a worse position to respond to the next challenge. When we focus on what we have, when we focus on the things we can do something about, they grow, they expand, and we feel more confident and more centered to be able to respond well to the next challenge. So that's one of the thoughts I have today about where we put our focus. Yeah, so going into the, it's beautiful um, the, and so important because I think we often lose our focus at that point. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Greg, as we kind of end up this year and people want to go into the new year, my daughter was saying to me the other day, you know, people went into 2020 with all these big dreams, <laughs> big goals, and they find themselves here probably not having achieved them, feeling like kind of what was that, nothing happened. How do you best advise someone to regroup after they've kind of looked at themselves, look at what is essential, 
Is it maybe to go into the new year without this long list of New Year's goals? Is it to go in with maybe just asking one simple question, what is essential and what can I eliminate? When I think about 2020, I think so everybody has lost something. Yeah. And, um, and it reminds me of an experience I had. Bear with me with this. But I, I, I found myself um, standing, it wasn't this year, but standing, looking at myself in the mirror, dressed head to toe in a stormtrooper costume. And <clears throat> in that moment, I was, I was standing, you know, about to buy this costume. And it was a very, you know, it was an expensive you know, movie quality level costume. And in that moment, I'm like, not one part of me wants the costume. I, I don't want to, I don't want to buy this. As not, I'm like, why am I even here? Why am I even thinking about this? And I realized that, that it was like 30 years earlier that Return of the Jedi had come out. And my, one of my older brothers had said to me in passing, you know, he's like, wouldn't it be great to own one of these costumes? And I'm like, Yes, it would. I, that's, that's it. And somehow on autopilot, I, that goal had lived on for me for the next 30 years. That's become a bit of a shorthand in our family where my wife Anna will say, if I'm sort of just going after something that seems a little bit of a shiny object, she'll say, look, is this a stormtrooper? Mm. And, and so I, I just offer that question as people think about well, what they lost in 2020 or what they want in 2021 sometimes it's a great gift to have things that we thought we wanted suddenly not be possible or goals that that you know be stripped away expectations of the future stripped away so that we say well what really matters i have a friend and maybe this doesn't seem like a, a very big example when people have really struggled this year uh, but um um but, but he he planned all this travel all summer and it was, his, it was one of his dreams to travel all over the world. And he scheduled it all. Oh, this is 2020, the summer. And then, of course, this happens. And none of that. It all got shot. And he said that his reaction when he, this happened was this. He went, meh, nothing. So here he was thinking it was this hugely important goal to him, something he dreamed of all doing. And then suddenly it's not happening. He realizes it, it, this is nothing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think there's a bit of a gift in this where we say, Look, there's only a few things we can that, that really matter. Most stuff is trivia. So as we go into 2021, what if we designed our, our life around those things we can control and that really matter? And, and, and let the other things, all that noise, all those uh, all the, the, all the, everyone else is doing, all the things that we see on social media, we think that we ought to be doing. And you just let it go and let 2021 be a simpler year, uh, but this time not an involuntary uh, essentialism, but a voluntary essentialism. That's what I would think. Beautifully said. I love the stormtrooper. I love <laughs> that. I think several people wrote in there that they too love that. I think that's a really great thing to keep in the front of mind. Is this, I used to always say, is this an ego job? Is this an ego uh, play? Or is this right. something I really want to do? But I think that kind of, is this a stormtrooper? Is this something that's really not about the present me, but is for right. some vision long ago? And maybe as you were saying to go into 2021 without our, I got to get thinner, I got to get younger, I got to get better, I got to do more, that maybe doing less, maybe focusing on one thing or two thing, two things, and maybe kind of looking within, as you were saying, and eliminating anything that keeps us from what's valuable in our life. Yeah, and, and, and I'll tell you where my heart really is right now, and, and this isn't, well, I can't say it without saying it, but but I did just finish a new book. It doesn't come out for months, but oh, good. Well, we'll talk but, when it does. Yeah, but the but the feeling the feeling as I've been writing this year is like is this principle? It's like not everything has to be so hard. Yeah. That 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 we can we can let go of some of these expectations that make things burdensome unnecessarily. And, and, and I think a lot of people know exactly what I'm talking about, where they're, they're trying to make progress, but it's, it's twice as hard to make half the progress from before. And, and if, you approach, if you approach 2021 from a new mindset, you find there's actually a more doable way to do. There's a more livable way to live. And those are, those are sort of where my heart really is, right? I love that. And so people ask uh, how they can listen to you. They can go to your podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the, the What's Essential podcast is, is, is marvelous. Um, I'd love to have you on there. 
Um, and, uh, and, and also just essentialism.com is a place where I'm, I'm launching. Actually, this is quite interesting. Um, starting the January 1st, we're going to do a 21 day challenge where right. every day you do one specific thing to be, have a more essentialist life. So 21 days for 2021. Uh, and they can sign up there at essentially. Oh, I'm going to sign well. up for that. I'm oh, I, I would love. I'm going to sign up for that, and um, we're going to put that up in the Sunday paper. That's a great um, thing, one thing, and it could be one thing that we're going to be doing that's essential in our life, or one thing we might be eliminating. That yes, so, so it's it's meant it's designed to be really easy, so that each day there's actually a specific suggestion. Okay. Um, they can read it, or there's a little video that will be out as well. And, okay. and I've been encouraging people to blog about it or to share with other people to give them permission to do something or to let something go. But there's a specific suggestion each day for, for 21 days. Oh, wonderful. So that's some way that we can stay connected with Greg and we can actually stay connected with ourselves, asking yes. us, following his questions every day for to get us off in this new year, perhaps with less and with less uh, with less things on our to do list. Yes, and, um, that would be a very different goal for most people, including myself. Well, and, and that and that's really what we want is is we want. I mean, if you had a word for the for 2021, it almost might be less. Uh, and if you had to extend it, it's less but better. Yeah. Um, and to do that, not because we have to, but because we choose to at some point. I know it doesn't always feel, feel realistic, but we will move past this period. Right. We'll move past it. And 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 then the challenge will be on us in a different perspective. Lots of things will come back that we don't have to do right now, running around, dropping off kids, doing all these kinds of things. And that will be its own challenge. And then we'll have to choose to be essentialists, you know, be, it, just because it's within us. And, and, uh, and I, I'm, I'm hopeful for what happens to people in their lives when they take responsibility for this, when they realize, uh, you know, I, I can design my life around what matters to me instead of living it by default. Uh, I love and, that. I love that. Let's all, we're going to be designed. Several people said, can you put this up in the Sunday paper? And we will, and we'll link to Greg's podcast. We'll link to essentialism.com. And uh, I love, we're going to leave it there with the idea that we can all design our lives, not default our way into them. And I think that, as you just said also before, if we're in control, if we're not in control of our life, if we're not designing our life, someone will come in and do it for us. Yeah. And we'll be pissed about that eventually. So. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Well, Greg, thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you made time to uh, speak with me and speak with all of us. As you know, I'm a fan of yours and admire of your work. And I think what you are putting out into the world and the questions you are asking us to ask ourselves are really deep probing ones and ones that actually make a difference in our day-to-day -day lives. So thank you. Well, thank you to you as well. Thank you so much. Oh, someone says you're their new man crush. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Greg. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So that was really great. So I'm sorry for the blip in the beginning. It just went off, and but we bounced back. So we'll be putting this conversation up in the Sunday paper. We'll link... Uh, to his podcast and to his website. You can follow him uh, on Instagram. And he does ask these really, I think, probing questions and thoughtful questions like, what's the one thing you can do every day that will make everything else easier or unnecessary? After I read that, I was like, what is the one thing that I can do? And if we don't design our own life, someone else will design it for us. That's really true. And um, very thought provoking. So um, we'll sign up for the Sunday paper. If you don't get the Sunday paper, it's a free weekly newsletter that has news and views that rise above the noise um, that move us forward. Views like Greg's and uh, so many others, um, which we're looking at uh, this week. We're exploring the idea of celebration, celebrating yourself and those who are in your life. We're looking at clearing things out, decluttering your life. We're looking at less is more. And we're looking at uh, what comes from being unified as a country and as a person. So there's a lot in this Sunday paper that's thought provoking, that I hope is inspiring, and that is also informing, because that's uh, our mission at the Sunday paper. So if you don't get it, please sign up at mariashriver.com 
and join the most informed and inspired community on the internet. A uh, great group of uh, people who are trying to move humanity forward in all areas of human endeavor, poet, musicians, uh, thinkers, doers, uh, philosophers, um, all kinds of people. So we hope that uh, you will join us there and I hope you have a safe weekend. Uh, I hope you are in good health. I hope you take care of yourselves. I hope you wear your mask. I hope you think about uh, the gift you're giving to other people and to yourself uh, when you do that. God bless you and thanks so much. Bye-bye.